Well, good morning, everyone, and welcome to our today's uh, professional development session covering Canvas ePortfolios. I'm Dave Giberson, an old instructional design coordinator from Online Learning Pathways. Uh, retired, but still doing a little bit of uh, work in retirement. And it's lovely to see you all this morning. Thanks so much for coming. Um, so, what is an ePortfolio? Um, as we were just discussing, it's sort of an extended resume. Think of it as a, a, a resume that is too big to fit in an envelope and that uh, you wouldn't want to send to a job opening because, necessarily because they'd, they'd can it right away, not wanting to, to read that many pages. But it's something you can put online and make available uh, to showcase your credentials, your accomplishments, your hobbies, whatever. Uh, think of it as sort of like LinkedIn, uh, the site where you, a professional uh, social media site where you can uh, put your uh, accomplishments out there for potential employers and colleagues. Um, E-portfolios and Canvas are available to both faculty and students equally. And um, in the case of students, they can showcase the work that they're doing in their classes. Particularly homework submissions in Canvas are very easy to uh, link into their portfolios so that they can build up a, a record of their work to share with peers, with friends, with uh, potential employers, and so on. In Canvas e-portfolios are not associated with any co <laughs> course. They're associated with a user's account. So students can put submissions from any course that they've taken on Canvas into, <coughs> excuse me, into their e-portfolio. Or they can bring in material from the outside. Uh, everybody retains access to their e-portfolios from semester to semester as long as they're actively uh, either employed at the San Diego Community College District or an active student, um, as long as uh, they have a Canvas account. And after that, uh, the uh, ePortfolio can be downloaded as a, in a zip file right from Canvas. And that information transferred to another place like LinkedIn or another ePortfolio tool somewhere else. So it's, uh, it, it, uh, quite frankly, it's not the most um, powerful ePortfolio tool out there. There are a number of them, but it's very tightly integrated with Canvas. It's real simple to use. It's convenient. And, um, it's, I think it's worth using for both faculty and students. So what do you put in an e-portfolio? Well, you know, you start thinking about what, what do I put in my resume? What do I share with the world? What do I want people to know about me? Um, you find suggestions on the web. Actually, I found these, I, I plagiarized <laughs> these, not to put too fine a point on it, plagiarized these suggestions here. I'd feel worse about it if I hadn't found them several places on the internet verbatim. <laughs> so I'm not the first one to do that. Um, I'd give credit, but I, I can't tell who <laughs> originally put this up. A couple of paragraphs on your career goals and objectives, you know, and maybe a little bit more than you put in the top uh, the top paragraph in your resume because you've got more room and people have got more time to read it. A version of your resume is a good thing to have in there, maybe as a PDF or an HTML version so that it'll come up in a web browser without having to, uh, uh, the, having the person have to have the word or something to open it up. Of course, contact information, if you, especially if uh, you want people to contact you, uh, like uh, prospective employers. 
at least two things that showcase your uh, accomplishments. Um, written work, a successful project, a video, um, things that represent your skills, capabilities, and the things that you could bring to an organization. Of course, they want to know what you look like. Of course, there, then you get into all sorts of privacy issues. And oh my God, are they, you know, are they going to judge me by what I look like because I'm old and fat <laughs> like me. <laughs> so, uh, uh, they, so that's there. That's kind of a, a fraught thing, but still it's, it makes it more impactful. I think awards and honors, obviously, and organization, those sorts of things that you put in a resume in many cases, but you you have so much more ability to uh, uh, present this in a more impressive and more engaging way. And uh, <clears throat> you can also provide links to personal websites or whatever, things like that. Anything that comes to mind that you'd like to share with people. And Canvas ePortfolios will allow you to do all of this. Creating an ePortfolio in Canvas, first thing we'll do, is dirt simple. You just go to the account link in the global access menu, the gray bar that's on the left on every Canvas page. And you'll have at the very top of that, there'll be an account uh, icon. You may or may not have a profile picture in there, but it'll be a circular. Uh, there may just be a silhouette there or something with the word account below it. You click on that, that brings up the account menu. And there's an ePortfolio link in the account menu. You click on that, you go to this page, and there's a button to create an ePortfolio. There's just not much to finding that. Well, let's do that live rather than just talk about it. So to do that, I just have to go to Canvas and log in. And here's my account link up here in the upper left. And I have an ePort uh, in the panel that slides in from the left. I have an ePortfolio link and everybody will have that. And that takes us to this page. And I've already got a portfolio here, but we're, I'm going to recreate it for you and show you how I did it. This was my practice <laughs> for today's session. And I'll create an e-portfolio. And the first thing I have to do is give it a name. How about um, Dave's e-portfolio for class. And what's today? The 14th, 6, 14, 2022. Just so I remember. <laughs> um, I have the option when I create a portfolio to make it public or private. It's private by default. Uh, if I want to make it public, I click this box right here. You can share your portfolio with... Uh, people you wish to share it with, whether it's private or public. It's just a little bit different, done a little bit differently. And I've got a slide for that later on. I'm just gonna leave this one private to start. And then um, I just click make ePortfolio and I have a blank ePortfolio. This is a so-called so dashboard for the ePortfolio. Over here on the left, we have what are called sections. And we'll talk a little bit more about the structure of the portfolio in a minute. Over on the right, we'll see pages. You can have any number of sections in your e-portfolio, and each section can contain any number of pages. Uh, whether you're... Um, just ready to jump in and try it or not, uh, you have an option here. You can just go to the portfolio and just start tinkering with it, 
or you have a getting started wizard, a little tutor, a little interactive tutorial that will give you, uh, that will help you get started with. Of course, that's my job today, but uh, let me show you the getting started wizard anyway. It pops up from the bottom of the screen. And each of these links over here deals with a different uh, aspect of ePortfolios. And we're starting with the introduction where you get a little description of what an ePortfolio is here. And if you wanna see where, uh, what they're talking about is on the screen, you just mouse over the little link there and it lights up on the actual display. So we've already talked about that where sections and pages are listed. Then it talks more about what portfolio sections are. I'm gonna do that. And so on, you can just run right through this. And then when you get to the end, you say, just let's do it. And then we go to the portfolio. And this is the actual dashboard of the portfolio. Um, I could have gotten here even quicker just by clicking here, go to the actual portfolio. And I would have skipped the getting started wizard entirely. It's it's entirely option. All right, so here's a blank portfolio. It's a little uh, hard to get an idea of exactly how this might work initially. So uh, that's what we're here for today, to see a, an e-portfolio created from scratch. And this is going to be a faculty or staff e-portfolio, as opposed to a student e-portfolio. We'll look at what might go into a student e-portfolio next. Um, we have by default one section, a home section, the first thing that pops up when you enter the portfolio. That's created for you automatically. And you have by default one page within that section. Um, as a matter of fact, I think I might benefit here from going back to the PowerPoint slide for a second. And let's talk about ePortfolio structure for a moment. You can have as many portfolios as you like, perhaps for different audiences. Each portfolio can contain any number of sections and each section can contain multiple pages. And each page can contain four different types of content. And I'm gonna illustrate what those mean as we go through. But rich text content basically is stuff you can enter into the portfolio using a, um, a limited version of the rich content editor in Canvas where you can type stuff and insert video, embed videos and things like that. HTML code, if you're an HTML programmer or if you, you routinely create web pages and web, web editors, you can take hypertext markup language, a web page code, and paste it right in. So you, if you have a nice web page somewhere that you'd like to just drop into your portfolio, you can just copy the HTML code from that page and paste it into, uh, the, into Canvas. If you're a student, especially, you can automatically bring in submissions, homework submissions that you've uh, uh, uploaded to Canvas as part of your courses. And you can always bring in images and you can share any sort of file that you like uh, with your audience. So that's kind of what we're in the process of doing now. Let's go back to the... Uh, to the ePortfolio page. So we start off with this home section and we start off with one page inside that section, a welcome page. We can uh, edit this, to put stuff into this page, this welcome page, we just need to edit it. And that's over here. Here are our pages listed over here. We have, we're in the home section because that's the only section we have. And within that, there's one page of information uh, named welcome. 
And if I want to edit that page, obviously I click on this button. And the first thing I can do is change the name of the page if I don't want it to say welcome. I can put my name there, whatever. Uh, and I can change my mind on that later if I like. Then by default, I get this um, partial version of the rich, the canvas rich content editor for starts. Let me adjust my key a little bit there. I see it's getting a little wonky. There we go. Um, that is what's called rich, what the portfolio jargon refers to as rich text content. That is, a, you can type stuff in here and you can um, uh, insert certain things like uh, tables, equations, <laughs> mathematical equations. I'm not quite sure why you do that. Or you can embed video into it. But let's say I want to Just a second, I'm waiting for something to <laughs> decide to cooperate with me. On another screen here. Handy thing to have, that's more like it. So um, I can type stuff here. Like maybe and I have the usual text editing stuff. I can make that bigger if I like. I can bold it, I can center it. All the usual text doodah. And maybe this is where I'll put my contact information. And I could put my phone number in here. I could put my email address or however I want people to contact me. I'll just put in my email address. You all might are welcome to use that at any time. I'm always happy to get questions uh, by email. Since this is being recorded, <laughs> it will be available to I don't know whom. I'm not going to put my phone number in there. It's all ready. Uh, I already get too much, uh, too many uh, spam calls on my phone. Um, and maybe this is a place to put a picture. But I don't have the ability to put a picture in right here. So. What I have to do, is this, and this is a little awkward. This interface can be a little awkward, especially until you get a feel for it. Okay, that, if I just want this text to appear here, I'm cool. I can just stop right there. And if I want to put in an image, I go over here to my add content tools. And we have those four types of content that I talked about, this so-called rich text content, which is mo it's pro mostly going to be probably text and video. Um, then if I had a web page, I wanted to paste in here the HTML code for a web page. I could do, excuse me, do that. If I just click that, then I get a little box that would allow me to paste HTML code in. I'm not going to do that right now. Whoop, shoot, that was dumb. Yes. <laughs> now, and I stupidly closed that without saving it, but Canvas has my back on this. Hey, I saved that, and I don't think you probably meant to throw that away. Would you like me to get it back for you? And the, the uh, you know, it's, it's whispering. You can almost imagine the word idiot at the end of that question, but it's polite enough not to say that. Okay, now I'm back to where I was. So you're working with the net a little bit here. 
Uh, if I were doing this as a student, I had some things I'd submitted to Canvas uh, for homework assignments or quizzes or um, uh, discussions. I could put that in here. Um, but in this case, I want to upload a, a picture. Not that it's uh, anything that anybody's really going to want to see, but well, they do like to know what you look like. So if I click that, then I get this little image slash file upload box. And this is completely different from anything else we use in Canvas. So like I say, it takes a little getting used. It's simple enough to use, but it's odd. Uh, at the here, I have at the top part of the box there, I have a list of files that I have in my personal file area in Canvas. Things that I've uploaded to there relatively recently anyway. And I could pick one of those and have it included. Like I could pick Alfred there, my alter ego. And then I can go here and I can hit select upload file. When I was younger, I looked ter I looked terrifyingly much like uh, Alfred E. Newman. So he's still sort of my alter ego there. And um, then I can just save the page. And there's, even though I, I, I put the text and the link and the image in using separate tools over here on the right, uh, it looks like just all one document when it comes out. Um, the one drawback to this, if I edit this page again, is that I can't really control that. I didn't want to do that. That's what happens if I click on it, it tries to download it again. Um, I can't really control the size of this image. So if you've got a you know a big high resolution photograph, <laughs> that you've saved is going to take up the whole page. Uh, it's viewable. It won't be the end of the world, but nobody needs to see me that big. Um, so sometimes you you may want to pick a, uh, a, photo, a photograph that's uh, a little bit smaller, lower resolution. Uh, for instance, often enough when you take a photo on your phone and you go to email that photo to yourself, perhaps, uh, the phone will ask you, well, do you want to email a full quality image or do you want a smaller image that takes up less space on the uh, hard drive and so on? And you can select a somewhat smaller image, but it'll, it'll basically take, it's, when I was playing with this, it took any image I wanted to put in here. I just didn't want to show something like this today. <laughs> <laughs> that's that's the default for a, a an iPhone photo. So that's I've got that over on my other screen. I'm, rather than recreate the having to retype everything from scratch, I'm going to do some copy and pasting. Just one of the reasons why it's nice to have multiple screens when you're doing Zoom meetings. Okay, so I've got this. Uh, So there's a, and I could keep going. I could put lots of other stuff on this page, but that's, I don't want to, we have a limited amount of time. So we'll just, I'll leave that to your imagination. We'll move on. Um, now, perhaps uh, this is my home section, but perhaps I want another section. I want to subdivide it so that people can find different parts of my portfolio that they might be interested in. To make a new section, I go here to organize sections. I've got the one section, the home section right now. So I'm gonna organize sections. And one of the things I can do in organizing sections is I can add a new section. That's a little awkward, but it works. When you click organize or add a new section, you just have to give it a name. I'll call this, career goals and objectives. And I'll tell it I'm done editing that. 
And uh, now I have a new section. I can navigate to that section just by clicking on the link to it. And right now, of course, it's empty. It's got one page in it that's just called new page. <laughs> and um, it is uh, a, uh, a blank sheet of paper. Think of it as a blank sheet of paper that you can now add or type stuff onto and add content to. I can edit the page. Can we upload an image from Canvas Unsplash? Yeah, you can upload an image from anywhere. That's a good point. I, I'm gonna I'm gonna show uploading a new image this time, rather than just picking one that was already in Canvas. So I'll edit the page, and rather than call it new page, I'm gonna call it what career? Question mark and save it. So now I, <laughs> let's flesh that out. I'll edit the page again. I could have just kept keep editing. And uh, let's say, first thing I want to do is upload a, uh, a picture. And rather than picking one that I've already got on Canvas, I'm going to upload one from my local hard drive. I'll do that by choosing, clicking this Choose File button, which we've seen other places in Canvas. I need to go to my pictures, where I have my pictures saved, and I need to find a picture of myself somewhere. Maybe this time I'll actually use a picture of me. Oh, that'll do. I just select the picture and click open. And I'm I'm sitting right in front of the open button, aren't I? <laughs> Not good. I can fix that. There we go. And now go back and click open. And then I have to click, and again, this is a little clunky. I have to click select slash upload file in order to actually upload the file into the portfolio. You see a little progress button up here. And there I am. And if I don't want to lose that, I save the page. <laughs> Though we've seen <laughs> that... Uh, uh, Canvas will look after you to a, certain, to a certain extent on that. So there's my beginnings of my career page. Um, I can continue editing the page and adding stuff to it. And let's say I'm going to add some rich text content here. Scroll down, and here's my text, my rump of my rich content editor and i'll just type career question mark make that bigger center it you know all the usual text stuff i can do And now maybe I want to type some uh, little information about my career goals. Uh, rather than typing here, I'm going to set that back to 14 point. And all the usual little word processing kind of stuff. Go back to uh, the left-hand margin. And I've got some text here. Paste in there. Okay, I probably don't need that bolded. Take that off. And maybe 12 point would be big enough for that. And uh, then I can save the page. Let's see what it looks like. Okay, when you're as old as I am, your career goals become 
a whole lot less ambitious. <laughs> what career? <laughs> uh, I'm still having fun doing this. And, it, and it's better than doing Sudoku to keep my mind from turning completely into mush. And I get to see you all and, and talk to you all. So it's a, it's a great thing. But those are probably the extent of my career goals. Uh, if I were going to put something in about what I expect and what I hope to be doing in five years, I would just say breathing. So uh, there's my career goals. Notice that there is a place for comments here. If you allow commenting on a page, which you can uh, do, or you can control when you're editing the page, uh, people can comment on the stuff, that, like the little mini Facebook, or you can turn that off <laughs> if you don't want them to be able to do it, and then save the page, and then that those comments disappear. That's entirely up to you, of course. All right, so fine. Um, all righty, Marsha, take care. Hopefully we got enough uh, for you to get started there. Um, now I could make, I could keep making sections and making more pages. Um, Typically, in a, some sort of portfolio, you'd have something about your accomplishments. So I can organize uh, sections over here. I can add a section. We'll call it accomplishments. Hopefully, I spelled that right. <laughs> and uh, I can go to that. Or I can done, tell it I'm done editing that. I can go to that. I can put in a page. Like maybe um, I can, by default, I get a page named new page. But uh, maybe the, I want this to be online resources created. That's mostly what I do now. And um, then I can add content to the page. And maybe I want to put in, let's go to, uh, let's go to image first. I'll get rid of that for the moment and choose a file. and search for a particular uh, picture I'm looking for and select upload file. Okay, that's a, a screenshot of a uh, page that I uh, have online, the, where it's a site where we're, I'll put this recording a little later on. So I can, that's good. I can keep editing or I can save the page. Uh, maybe I want to add some rich text content. That'll give me this editor, and I can type the title of that page. Maybe I'll paste it. <laughs> to save a little time, I can center that, bold it, it's already bolded. I can center, I can make it a little bigger, I can center it. And I can add a link to it. I can use that as a link or a, an anchor for a hyperlink. 
and I'm going to, there's actually one already there. I'm going to remove it and then add it back. I can make an external link, and that might be the link to get to that page. And save the page. So there's the, the picture of the page. And to get, if I want people to be able to get to it, they can click right here and go to the actual live website. So these are just some tricks you can do to um, um, give people access to stuff that you want them to see. You can even do something, and this is a, a neat trick with that you can do with the Canvas Rich Content Editor that I am um, enamored of. I can use, again, the rich text content, the, the rump of the rich content editor, and I can go to the embed button here. And before I do that, I need a, um, a URL, a uh, website URL, and I also need a, Let's see if I can get that. Okay. That's probably going to take too much time, isn't it? Yeah. I'll show you what I was able to do. And if I have time in a minute, I will come back and, and do it. But another thing I could do here, and here's a completed version of the, C, of the e portfolio, the same page as working on. And one of the things you can do with a Canvas Rich Content Editor is you can actually embed a live website into the box here. This is a Canvas course that is uh, set to be public on the Canvas system that we use. This is our little on-demand professional development site. And if you need flex credit sometime, uh, suddenly realize the uh, two hours before the end of the flex deadline that you need another hour of flex credit, uh, you can go here, you can watch a video and ask questions about or answer questions about the video that are embedded in the video and get credit, flex credit for it. We've got it approved for by all of the powers that be and so on. And this is a, an accomplishment. I'm quite I, I created this for online learning pathways. I'm very uh, fond of that. So I, I was actually able to embed a website in here. And given time, given a time in a moment, since that's not the primary purpose of this session, given time in a moment, I'll show you how I did that. I have to go look up something that I suddenly realized I don't have at my fingertips here before I can do that. All right, so I've got that, and I'll just save that page. And so I've got a nice accomplishments page. And I can keep going with this. Uh, one thing I might well want to have in there is my actual resume. Uh, if I go to the home page and edit that page, I might want to uh, put in my resume. Not that I've updated it lately, but I can go to image file upload. And that will give me this box that we've seen before. I can go to choose file. And I can look for my resume. We should be in here somewhere. There it is and open that, select that, and 
Um, oops, I'm in the wrong one, aren't I? Shoot. Here we go. Let me delete that one. And once again, I will go to image file upload. And I'll choose the file from documents. And open it. And click select upload file. That uploads it into my portfolio. And this is what's going to appear in the portfolio. If I save the page, that will be down at the bottom. Click here to download Dave's resume. And if I click on that link, since I, despite my advice earlier, I, uh, I made this, I used a Word document here. I can download that. I can save it on my hard drive if I'm a potential employer. And then I can open it up, assuming I have Word. That's why a PDF or an HTML version might be better. We're just trying to come up here. And there's my resume, such as it is and what there is of it. So uh, I can just keep doing things like that. I can add. Um, On any page, I can create as many sections as I like, as many pages within each section. I can arrange my stuff I want to share in any way. And I can put in these four types of information that we've seen. And I've shown you examples of each, except the HTML embedded content, which I that's just a little bit beyond the scope of this one, of this presentation. So I have a sort of a resume or sort of a uh, e uh, an e-portfolio for myself. How might that be different for students? Well, uh, students would do my, many of the same things. They would um, put much of the same information in there. Um, Oh, one thing I did not show you how to do is how to put a video in. Let me do that. Let's go back to the home section and go to the welcome page and edit the page. And to put in a video, I will need to go to the rich content, uh, rich text content, I should say, option. I'll get this, and I'm going to use the embed tool here again. But to do to do that, I need a an embed code for a video that I might have on YouTube or Canvas Studio. I can Go to my Canvas Studio library. Here I've got a little video I made for this demonstration. I can view that video and I can share that video. And if I create it, I can create public links, including an embed code for the video. Don't need to know anything about how that works. And Canvas Studio will create it for you automatically. All you have to know is how to copy it to your clipboard. Right click, copy, done. Now I can go back here and I can go again to the embed tool and I can just paste that embed code into this box. Again, it doesn't, you don't have to know anything about how that works and submit it. And now that video becomes a part of my page. So that's how you put a video into your e-portfolio, any video you want to share. Uh, you use, again, the rich content option, rich text content option, and you use the embed tool, the little cloud out at the end of the icon bar. Save the page. Now that's a, 
uh, video that will play in the page. Welcome to my ePortfolio. I'm Dave Giberson, an old retreaded chemist. So, and again, students can do all of this as well. The one thing that I haven't shown you in my ePortfolio, because it really wasn't uh, germane for me, would be a student submission from Canvas. A lot of what students would put in their portfolios, e-portfolios, would probably involve things that they'd turned in in their Canvas courses, that they'd submitted to assignments and so on. So how does that work? Well, I have a, a student portfolio over here in Firefox. Let me get that over where I can share it with you. I'm low, uh, using a different web browser here, so I don't confuse it as to who's logged into Canvas and uh, who they are. Um, and uh, here I'm logged in as one of my test students. And I have created for that test student an e-portfolio. Let's take a look at that. I wasn't very imaginative about naming it. <laughs> But this it looks just like the this looks just like the uh, dashboard for my personal or my faculty portfolio. But here I'm test one student. Uh, there's a home section, a career goals section, and a student work section. We've pretty much seen how home and career goals work. But what about student work? How would a student? Um, share work that they've done with the uh, with peers or with a potential employer or with a, a faculty member perhaps an advisor um, they can they can embed video just like i did on mine Okay, forgive the sitting out on the brain. That's a live shot of an, of an osprey sitting on a tree outside my back window. Okay. Um, here's a uh, homework submission. And this is a little disappointing in that the, the document doesn't just appear here. If uh, the student wants to share a submission with the uh, with their public, uh, this just doesn't work well because it, it doesn't come up. What you can do is I this is one of the more awkward parts of this. Let me refresh that. Somebody who wants to watch this has to click view feedback, and then they can see the student submission and any feedback that was provided. So this is a little clunky. And this is a, uh, a participation in a um discussion topic so how did the student get this in here well the student just went to edit the page and use the course submission add content option there and hear that uh here that is. And they automatically get a list of things that they had submitted recently in Canvas. And they can scroll down and by recently, I mean, it can be as long ago as, you know, it can go back quite a ways. My earliest one is back in here in 2019. 
And if the student wants to submit a uh, some work to their ePortfolio, they just find one where they've actually got a submission and select it, or click on it to select it, get the gray highlight around it, and then click Select Submission. And there's the student's course submission for that assignment. It was a Word document. Um, to curiously enough to actually really see the document and see any feedback, uh, the reviewer would have to click here, view feedback. And here is the uh, submission, including any feedback that was markup feedback that was made and so on. Seems a little awkward, but it works. So the student can give this roll of toilet paper, basically, list of things that they turned in that they like people to be able to view. Uh, they could also just do an image file upload and upload a file from their local computer. So they're not limited to things that they've actually turned in on Canvas. Uh, but they would use the image file upload option instead of the course submission option. So we now have an ePortfolio. How do we share it with people? Let's go back and take a look at our PowerPoint slides. Basically, you can make your ePortfolio public. You can do that by going to ePortfolio settings here and just check, make it public, update the portfolio. So how are people going to find it? Well, you still have to give them a link to it. Um, if you go to home here, here's the link to this portfolio up here in the address line on the browser. So you can copy that to your clipboard and you can paste this into an email or put it as a link in a, a, a Canvas page or in a web page that you create somewhere else. Uh, you could put a make it an external URL in a Canvas pay in a Canvas course on another system or whatever. If, on the other hand, you make this private by unchecking that and updating the results. And then go to the portfolio dashboard. You are given a safe link that you can choose to share with only with people that you want to see your portfolio. Like you could email this to a prospective employer, a student could email this to a professor or a, another student, a peer. Just copy that to the clipboard. And go to another web browser, paste that into the address line on the web browser and press enter. And it takes the person right to the portfolio without having to log into Canvas or anything like that. I happen to be logged in now, but if the portfolio, even if the portfolio is marked private, if a person, if the um, person to whom you send this link has the link, gets the link, they can just click on that link and it takes them right around Canvas's login and things like that. All they can see is the portfolio. They can't get into anything else in Canvas, but they can see your portfolio. So that's basically in either case, whether the portfolio is public or private, uh, people are going to have to have that link, have a link to it. This link includes the validation information necessary to get them into the portfolio. If the portfolio is public, they don't need that. All they need is that simpler URL. But I haven't figured out a way for someone to search for it in Canvas and find it. So you'd have to put a link in your Canvas course for your students to access your portfolio. 
so it's again a little awkward but it works and finally let's say you eventually graduate <laughs> or you move on and you want to take this uh, information with you that you put into your e-portfolio and you've collected all this good stuff you want to be able to share it with outside of canvas later there is an option on your portfolio dashboard to download the contents as a zip file if we go back to the portfolio that's right here so you just click that link and it has to extract everything from the portfolio and pack it into a compressed archive or a zip file if you have a big portfolio that may take a few minutes here it didn't take long and i've got a uh it just names the file portfolio.zip uh and i've done this recently so it's uh um let me just I can rename that. And save it. And if I um, go to where that is stored on my hard drive and extract it, in the usual way. Here's all the stuff. Here's my the pages in each of the uh, of the sections are converted into HTML documents, web pages, and you can just double click on them and open them up. Um, Here's the welcome. It, it basically creates a little website for you with links to other stuff. It's really pretty cute. Pretty, uh, the uh, website really works pretty well. And the, um, so you don't need Canvas. You don't lose your ePortfolio. Uh, you can, just send that zip file to someone and they can unzip it on their computer and view your portfolio. Or you can put this online somewhere other than Canvas. You can put it on uh, in a Google site, a free website that you create somewhere. And this, you have this ready-made website, you just copy into the uh, whatever hosting, free hosting service or paid hosting service you're using. And you then have that portfolio handy and it's no longer uh, predicated on your having access to or an active account in Canvas. So it's the e-portfolio that you build in Canvas is not going to become useless to you once you leave the district, either graduate or, or take a job somewhere else. You can still retain this portfolio. So, um, And that's everything I have on ePortfolios for you today. Let me see here. Get back to uh, Zoom and look and see if I've got some any questions here. In the let's see. Already answered that one. Can they upload a URL they created? Absolutely. They can put a link into a, uh, a rich content page. Um, that, and that's what I did. I, I showed you that with the on-demand site. Um, if I go to home here and the accomplishments page, or the accomplishments section and the online resources page, I made a link right here. I just typed something. If I edit the page, 
I can just highlight the text that I've typed and click the little link button here in what I have of the rich content editor and put in a link, an external link. I just pay, uh, type it or paste it into here. Pasting is usually preferable. It's a longer URL. And then save the page. So now there's a uh, an actual link in the ePortfolio. That's done again through the rich text content option. So that answers that question. I don't see any others there. Does anybody have anything else they'd like to ask? Please feel free just to unmute yourself if you're muted and speak up. Hi. I can barely hear you. Uh oh. Um, okay, now I can hear. I just. I just typed into chat. Did oh, good. Or Wix. Oh. Uh, I typed into chat. Uh, how about wix.com or YouTube? Could could the zip file be uploaded there? Not to YouTube, but you could. With wix.com, you could unpack it, extract it on your local computer, and then you can upload the individual files to Wix.com, yes. Or Google slide or Google Pages. Mm -hmm. I'm sorry, Google Sites. Google Sites. Or there are any number of other type uh, of free hosting services out there. But the Wix.com and, and Google Sites are probably the two most common. And they're both as far as I know. Google Sites is free. I think Wix is for limited use as well. Good question. Right. And we did get, we, I, I can't hear you now. That's good. <laughs> All right. Uh, and we got that question on the, in the recording. That's good too. All right. Anybody else? Everybody ready to go make their portfolio on Canvas? <laughs> I'd be interested to hear your uh, your thoughts on it, if you do. Um, you can do this for free on LinkedIn as well, but I think LinkedIn is probably even a little bit more uh, challenging. The interface is more challenging. It's more powerful, but it's also more challenging. And um, I think, and it'd be more difficult to share stuff that you already have in Canvas and so on. So this, this is a tool that's really probably built mostly with students in mind, but faculty can certainly use it to effect as well. Um, can you hear me now? I hear you very well. Okay. Um, one of my students videotaped me on his iPhone and he used iPhone to create a very short one minute video. Does it, since I missed your presentation, does it also allow short video or only still? Oh, absolutely. Absolutely. Uh, let me see. Let me find that video I put in here. I will be sending mine to you. <laughs> it's the use of underglaze pencil. Yeah, I put a little video here on my uh, welcome page. Let me edit that okay. page and show you how I did that. Ah. Okay. Um, there it is. I uh, let me add another video to it here. I do that by going to uh, it's not at all obvious, but I do that by going to the rich text content option, not the image okay. slash file upload option, which you might expect. Okay. So I click that and it gives me a new option down here to add this rich text content. Rich text by definition uh -huh. includes not just text, but images, video, sound, things like that, potentially. 
to put another okay. video in here. I go, um, I've got this um, displaying larger to make everything. Um, Lena, very good. Thanks so much for coming. Uh, to make this a little bit easier to see, I thank have blown did. this up. Yes, go ahead. I just want to say thank you and uh, have a nice afternoon and you see did. you next time. I'll look forward to it. Take care. Bye-bye. Take care. Let me, uh, this is what it would normally look like. Okay, and you'd, you'd see the little cloud option out here at the right. And I think you can yes. see it pretty well. And now I just need an embed code for a video. And I can get that embed yeah. code from anywhere. Let's say the student has the video on a um, on an iPhone. Yeah. Okay. There are a number of ways they could share that video with you. Uh, probably the easiest way is for them. He did share. Uh, go ahead. He did share it with me as an email, um, and he shared it with me. As through Canvas Studio, but that was before I had the picture of the final product that I wanted them to add. Ah, I see. Um, so good. Yeah, sharing it with you through Canvas Studio is the obvious option, or YouTube, um, or sending you the file. If yeah. you get the video file, then you can put it on YouTube or Canvas Studio, and you can put it in, you can share it in the portfolio as well. So one way or another, though, in order for the video to show up in your portfolio, it has to be online on a video hosting site, yeah. preferably a free one or at least free to you, like Canvas Studio or YouTube. Um, so you'd have to go through the process of putting this video file up on YouTube. You want me to go through that? Okay. Yes? Sure. Yeah. Okay. Yes. Absolutely. Uh, so before I actually do this, I'm going to take that out. Just get, not say. I think it was M O. I think it was M O V. You know, dot M O V. Yeah, it would what, be when he emailed it to me. Yeah, if it came off an iPhone, it would be. iPhone records in uh -huh. the old Apple video format, the so-called M O V file, but that's fine. YouTube Canvas Studio will handle most any common video format that you want to send to them. So let me just, um, let's say, uh, which would you rather see, YouTube or Canvas Studio? Um, well, I guess YouTube, because I know how to do it from Canvas Studio. Oh, good. Okay. <laughs> let's do it on YouTube then. All right. So I just need... Well, I mean, I don't know this. I mean, uh, I, I misspoke. I'm sorry. I, I only know how to use Canvas Studio. I don't know e. Okay, let me show you YouTube then. Uh, because you can, even if the video is something you don't want to share with the world, you can put it on YouTube and mark it as unlisted. And no one will be able to see it unless you give them the mm -hmm. link. Okay, so I, I'll just go to YouTube here. I have, to, I, have to have, I have to be logged into my Google account. Well, almost all of us have a Google account already. If you use Gmail, for instance, you already have a Google account. If not, you can get one for free. If you're not, if you go to YouTube and you're not logged into your Google account on that computer or that device, there'll be a little sign in button here that will prompt you to do so. I am, I stay logged into my Google account all the time. So I see my little profile picture here that I is associated with my Google account that I uploaded to Google. If I don't see a picture, I'll just see my initials here in a little circle. I click there and I go to YouTube Studio in the menu that pops up, which is my video management. It's, it's where I can uh, upload and manage uh, videos to YouTube. Let me and I've got this little up up arrow here or i can use the create right. button. either one works 
If I want to upload a video to YouTube, I just click the create button is the easiest way to do it. And I have the option to upload a video or go live on YouTube <laughs> to the world. I will not do that now. I'm going to upload a video I've already made. And I get this wizard, this series of screens that will walk me through the process of uploading a video to YouTube. I don't have to remember how to do this. I just have to remember how to get started. So I'll select the files that I want to upload. I have to go and find a video on my hard drive. Uh, let me find something that's not too embarrassing here. Do, do, do. Come on. <laughs> it's it's going to load thumbnails for my videos here in a second. I just don't want to make it anything too too long. It'll take too long to upload. All right, how about Rocky? <laughs> uh, this is an MP4, but this will work with. Oh, here's an MOV. Here's an MOV, oh, like okay. the one that was sent to you. Okay, okay. it'll work just as well. Um, and I just select it, click on it to so select it, and click open. And the file starts to upload. Then the, the wizard, while it's uploading, Google asks you for some more information. It's going to give you uh, an opportunity to give it a name other than the file name that you, of the video file that you uploaded. Um, just going to call this uh, demonstration video upload. I can give it a more detailed description if I like. And the first time you do this, you may have to, it may force you to go down and tell it whether the video is made for kids or not. YouTube's very sensitive about people using YouTube to market stuff to kids. So they, uh, if, if you say, yes, it's for kids, and by the kids, they mean someone under 13, 13 or under, I should say. Um, if that's your intended audience and you say yes here, there's a bunch of other hoops you have to jump through where you swear you're not going to market sugared cereal to kids and things like that. But if you, if you leave it at the default of no, then you get to uh, miss those hoops. And after all, our students are all almost, almost all over 13 at least. So <laughs> we don't have to worry about that. Uh, then I just click next to continue through the process wizard. And these next few screens, there are things you can do here, but there's really nothing you need to do here. So this video elements, I'll just skip past by hitting next again. And if it, if you try to How skip about the subtitles, here, go ahead. Sometimes I want to do, I want to caption myself or correct the caption. So add subtitles or no? no. Uh, you don't. It's so sometimes gonna, I have to I correct. Know. I honestly don't know why that's there in the video element screen because it's going to add okay. subtitles okay. anyway. Um, yeah, okay. actually, what, what they're thinking here is that you may have a caption file all ready to go that you can upload oh, yeah. with the, that are, the captions are already edited and so on. That's going to be relatively rare. But they, they give well, actually, they the, allow for that possibility. The student did that. The student did that on his movie. Oh, yeah. He actually had. So, so would that be in that case? I would choose that. No, or it the, comes up automatically. YouTube is going to automatically recreate caption okay. within, usually okay. within minutes. So you don't have to. Okay. You don't have to load a, a caption file here, but no. you can if you have one you'd rather use rather than their automatic caption. Then you go next again, and there are a series of checks that YouTube is going to run this through. This screen is mainly inter informational. If you upload an episode of Grey's Anatomy to YouTube, they're going to flag it as copyrighted and take it down. And they're going to give you a copyright strike. And if you get too many copyright strikes, they're gonna, <laughs> they're gonna eliminate you from Google, any of Google resource. You don't wanna do that. You do not wanna upload copyrighted video or a commercially copyrighted video, like a TV show or a movie to YouTube. If you do, they'll slap you down. 
the first time you do it, they'll uh, just put you on probation for 90 days. And if, then if you do it again, the penalties get progressively worse until eventually they remove you from YouTube and all other Google services, including your Gmail, <laughs> if you use Gmail. So you don't want to do that. Uh, it is, uh, uh, I accidentally did something one time that I shouldn't have, and I was in uh, Google's doghouse for 90 days. I don't recommend the experience. I was very, it's like, you know, getting caught speeding more than 15 miles and over the limit <laughs> and getting points on your license. It's equally un uncomfortable if you use YouTube as much as I do. So this is automatic. You don't have to do anything here. It just it's informational. And it said no issues found. This is obviously not a commercial video that anybody would pay for. So yeah, that's fine. So you hit next again. And the one thing you do have to do is tell video, uh, YouTube the level of visibility you want the video to have on YouTube. And that ranges from private to unlisted to public. Public means anybody can view it and people can search for it. It may pop up in search results on the web when people search for something in Google. If your video is something that doesn't have confidential information in it and it might be of value to other people, you can make it public and anybody can view it. And the strangest things will be useful to people. Um, I've I've had a few videos that are put on that have gotten thousands of views on YouTube that were just nothing special, but they just happened to hit a nerve with a particular group of people. Um, you can make it private, but that's very restrictive. It's not appropriate for instructional content because uh, people to view that uh, so a video that's private on YouTube, you have to specifically list the people who can view it. And you have to list them by their email addresses. And those people have to have Google accounts and you have to know what their email address is for their Google account. And um, you can only share it with a limited number of people. So private is like for baby, uh, baby videos and things like that, that you really don't want anyone else to see. Um, so instructionally, you're never going to use that on the most commonly used option is unlisted, which means that anybody can view the video, but they have to, you have to supply the link to the video to them somehow. You have to email the link to them or put the link in a, in a module in Canvas or something like that in order for them to access it. They can't search for that video. That video can't be searched on Google. You, the people can't find it by searching for that topic on Google. And um, it's effectively private, but not so private that you have to list the people that you think might, that you won't want to be able to view it. You just have to choose who you provide the link to. If a student, go ahead. If a student were to share the link with another student, if a student were to share that link with another student, that that other student could view it, correct? Yes, yes. Anyone can view it who has the. If if the video is unlisted, anyone can have it, can view it, if they're provided with the link. Thank you. So you don't have to think in advance. You don't have to figure out in advance who might want to view the video. You just provide the link as appropriate. Uh, so I'm to leave this one unlisted. And then I click save. And the video has to upload. First off, the video file has to upload to YouTube. This is a short enough video that that happened while I was talking about it. So it's already up there. And all I have to do is close this window now. I can either X that, exit out or just hit close. And that will then I can go to my content list in the YouTube studio, which shows me all the videos that I've uploaded. And there it is. It's already up there. It's already available to students. 
or to anyone. It's unlisted, so it's potentially available to anyone if I give them the um, link. So I, to do that, I can go to the video details page for that video, and there's the link. But to put this link, to put this video into my ePortfolio, I need an embed code, not just a simple link. So how do I get that? Well, YouTube will supply you with an embed code as well. I, just, I have to view the video on YouTube by going over to the little thumbnail here. And there's the actual YouTube page. All right, there's the video on YouTube, ready to be viewed. To get the embed code for the video, I go to the share button that's right underneath the video. And you can get embed codes for any video on YouTube, even if you don't own it, because this share button's always there. So you click that, and here's the basic link, but that's not what I need. I need the embed code, which I can get by clicking here, where it says embed. And there's the embed code. I, again, I don't have to understand that. All I have to do is get it on my clipboard. And I can do that by just clicking. I can highlight it and copy it, or I can just click the copy button here. YouTube gives you a shortcut for that. So now that's on my clipboard. So I go back now, finally, to my ePortfolio. And I find the section and the page where I want that video to go. And I edit the page. And I'm going to go to the rich text content option, even though this is not text, which is why that's a little, that misnomer is a little, but I get another rich text content box here. I go to the embed um, icon in the, cloud. yeah, the little cloud. And I just paste that embed code into the box here and submit. And there it is. And save the page. And let's see. I think I can, can I center that? I think I can. Yeah, I can center it if I want to. Then I can save the page. So now when somebody pulls up this page, they can just go right here and they can play the video right off YouTube. One in this screencast video. They can make it, they can full screen it. We're going to learn how to solve a simple algebraic quadratic equation. The video was created using the... So... I got, one, I got one more for you. Good. Could you take us through the steps? Because I always want to have the captions, the CC. So I noticed the caption CC icon is grayed out at this moment. Could you take us through the steps of... Making sure, you know, make, make sure they always have a little eye. I always have to capitalize the eye. So can you take us through the steps, please? Because I wouldn't want to put it in my portfolio until so, I had you, the caption. If you put this Corrected. on yeah. YouTube, there's just one step. And it can be yeah. summarized in one word. Wait. Uh, yeah. YouTube has an automated process, a so-called daemon, that runs through the site constantly. And if it finds a video that's not captioned, it captions it automatically. But that takes a few minutes to occur. This video is not yet captioned on YouTube. If we go back to the video and refresh... Hi, everyone. In this screencast, it just hasn't gotten around to this one yet, which you don't have to worry about okay. that. Within a few minutes, those captions will be available, and you don't have to do anything to make that occur, either while you're uploading the video to YouTube or after. YouTube is going to caption that video unless there are certain problems with the video. If the sound is real bad, or if there's no speech, <laughs> or if you don't start talking, 
within the first 10 uh, seconds of the video. Sometimes it will look at that video and say, well, there's no speech here and just move on. So you, you want to make sure if you upload a video to YouTube and you expect it to be captioned that there's not a long period of silence at the beginning of the video. But that's about the only reason. That are really bad sounds and about the only reason YouTube would not caption a video. And it will just do that automatically within minutes. And, and the you don't have to go back and, and re-embed. You don't have to wait to, re, to embed the video in your portfolio until the captions appear. When the captions become available later, they'll automatically be available in the embed, embedded uh, version of the video, which is just really a, a fancy link to the video. The video is still on YouTube. It's not in Canvas. The embed is just a, a sexy looking link to the video on YouTube. So the video will automatically be captioned within a certain period of time. That is different, of course, as you're aware, I'm sure, in Canvas Studio. In Canvas Studio, you have to go through a process where you request the captions, and then you have to go back and, and okay them before they will show up to people who are viewing the video that you've embedded somewhere. Uh, that's not true with YouTube. They just they fail on, and that's one of the one of the things about I'm not as impressed with about Canvas Studio as I might be, because I had a I was embarrassed the other day I I put a video up on YouTube or I'm sorry on Canvas Studio that was going to be shared with uh, a wide a wide group of people. It was a recording of a turn it in training session that the company had done for us. And I requested the captions, but I forgot to go back and ballot and uh, publish them. And I get this note from my boss well, saying, would you mind turning the captions that. on on that video before I send that link out to the world and, and p when we have it out there with no captions on it? So it's possible to forget to do that in Canvas Studio. And that's that's suboptimal, particularly when you're my age. <laughs> so right. you don't have to worry about that with YouTube. Could you uh, maybe find a different video and just show us to go over the steps to edit on the YouTube captions? Because I yeah, noticed the, the, the sure. word I always is a little I. Absolutely. So, ah, hi, everyone. I can do it on this one now. Okay. That's how long. Yay. Okay, yay. Okay, that's usually it's not much longer than yeah. that. All right, so let's do this video. All okay. right. I can do this because I'm. It's my video, and I'm logged into YouTube. I can't edit captions right. for videos I don't own on YouTube. But uh, to edit yeah. the captions on uh, a video that's mine, and let me get myself out of the way here. I'm in the way again. I can um, go. I uh, just bring up the video on YouTube and go to edit video in the just below and to the the below the right hand corner of the video yes. and that yeah. takes me to the video details page for the video directly and if i look over here on the left i have a series of things i can do with this video and included in that is the is a link to subtitles Subtitles and captions are pretty much the same thing, okay, for our purposes. Right. There, there's a technical distinction, but as far as YouTube goes, the captions on YouTube are subtitles. So we click the subtitles button, and we get a display that looks something like this. Uh, the, the first row here is what we want. This just specifies the uh, language that you want to that you want the captions in, and it uh, YouTube automatically takes that from your default for your YouTube account. If you're uh, if the, they know you're from the United States, they'll automatically do this in English. 
The actual captions are represented by the top line here. And it says English automatic. These are the automatic captions that YouTube has created for you. But if you want to edit those captions, you just go out to the right here and click where it says duplicate and edit. And that takes you into the YouTube caption. And this process changes from time to time, I will warn you. <laughs> this, is, this is new. They, they're improving all the time. But here's the, uh, uh, the transcript. And uh, to edit that, you just play and watch. Hi, everyone. In this screen... Well, maybe I want to capitalize. It doesn't cap the beginnings of sentences. And it doesn't detect periods. So maybe I want to make those edits. And then keep playing. In video, we're going to learn how to solve a simple algebraic quadratic equation. There's a period. And some of this you can do just by reading the captions. You can probably tell where the sentence breaks are. The video was created using the technique called screencasting. Screencasting is actually one word. Through the uh, agency of the Camtasia Studio Recorder. We also That's a sentence break. All I'm having to do here, you'll note, is cap yeah. and period. The uh, mm -hmm. these, uh, speech to text good. is just amazing these days on both YouTube and Canvas Studio. And it's even picking up, you know, like Camtasia. That's a made-up word. It's a, it's a, um, uh, a brand name of a piece of software, and it got right. <laughs> phonetically, I assume, or maybe I don't know. Camtasia. It's better with technical terms than it is with some other things, but it, it's phenomenally good. So used a free software whiteboard called Google Jamboard and an XP pen graphics tablet. Here we go. So, you know, I, the periods and the caps are not required. <laughs> you know, I, I probably would have taken one look at that and just <laughs> and said, that's good enough and gone on. But that's just me. But that's how you edit. Thank you. And then you just publish. Uh, and then you got to save it. Publish. Publish. Okay. Publish. Thank you. Thank you. And now you have three, you have two caption tracks, the original unedited automatic one and the one you just edited, which is just labeled English. It's labeled with the language. Um, YouTube will co 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 caption in something like 50 or 60 different languages. Pretty, and we get it for free. Let you know how much Google makes on the advertising. But that's another, that's a topic for another day. <laughs> the, that refresher. Another adventure. And Google, when it plays, when somebody plays your video, uh, YouTube will, by preference, use the edited captions rather than the original. Oh. So you don't have to worry about telling it which caption drag to use. So, and if you want to caption in another language, you can do that too. Um, so, uh, pretty remarkable stuff. And now, so now when that video is played on YouTube. Hi everyone. In this screencast video, we're going to learn how to solve a simple algebraic quadratic equation. I can turn the captions on and off. Using the technique called screencasting through the uh, agency of the Camtasia Studio Recorder. That's great. Did that answer your question? Thank you. Yes, well, it, 
I'll be, I'll, it's going to be fun for me to, to upload my student's video and see if the, um, he, he put, they're not really captions because he has music and he has, there's no talking. It's only words that he put up, see? Um, oh, okay. Like banners. Uh, well, if there's, so I, so I'm going to try, I'm going to try it and see what if happens. There's no audible speech. It can't. No, only catch. music playing. Yeah. So it's not going to be catch. Well, well, there's no, there's no talking. There's no talking. He just took stills and silent video. And then he put the words, he typed them in there. And that's perfectly. Is all. Yeah. yeah. So, but I, I was curious if that would transfer over. As oh, a yeah. file yeah, that's into YouTube. Absolutely. Okay. Okay. Absolutely. So it'll still have the music and the words and yeah. Oh yeah. Okay. It'll Wonder. be fun. Y you know, because in a way, I think it was more effective that he took stills and then some video and he slowed the video down mm -hmm. and then had this banner. Because a student can really focus on the visual right. and read the few words. I think it's much more impactful than a screencast where everything's moving in the video real time. Real time and someone's yeah. talking. You're, you're, conflict, you're conflicting with listening and watching. I found it very effective. Uh, well, there's something, another thing that you might think about too in that regard is that when you play back a video, from either YouTube or Canvas Studio, you can vary playback yeah. speed, and and the yeah. Uh, yeah. playback the uh, the player will adjust pitch so that the voices are intelligible, if not natural. Yeah. If you slow it down, okay. yeah. Uh huh. Uh, yeah. And you can, of course, turn the sound off. If you're, if you're going that slow, the captions are all you need. Yeah, right. So that's an option that the viewer always has with a, vi a YouTube right. video or a Canvas Studio video. They can slow down the playback to if things are moving too quickly, if it's like, a, as you say, a screencast and things are happening too quickly on the screen, they can slow down the playback and concentrate okay. and use the, yeah. and the voice there was intelligible, but, right. um, you know, it's kind of irritating. So if you don't need the voice, if the captions are going by slow enough, you can just turn on the captions, reduce, Playback speed and follow what's going on, and you don't have to do anything to make that happen. <laughs> no, uh, I was showing the students a Maria Martinez video where she was making a pot by hand with a gourd and something oh, yeah. inside, and it was real hard for me at real time speed to stop the video to see what was that thing she just pulled out of it. Right, but the whole idea. You change the speed you can slowly see her take it out oh it's a rag or yeah or it's a rib you know it's a gourd that she the, there are lots of circumstances where uh, uh slow motion playback are more instruct is more instructionally effective and you always have that option wherever you yeah. put the video you have that option if it's stored on youtube or canvas studio thank you so much dave you are certainly welcome Great questions. Yeah. Anything else I can help with? Anybody? And it doesn't have to be about any particular topic. Uh, I'll take questions on anything that you have here. What did I do? I just clicked on an advertisement, not meaning to. Well, I'll, I'll give you one more question, but I, I think it's something that 
can the studio used to allow the captions to come up on a video if I had published them. And now it seems like a student has to go to the settings, click captions, click English, and then the captions will be on. Is that the case? Okay? Can the studio no, there is a they've changed the icon from the standard mm -hmm. CC to a little square yeah, with little dashes in it. Let me show you what it looks oh. like. Oh, okay. Uh, that and it's not ideal. Uh, let me see. I don't think this video has captions yet, so let me oh, pick. It okay. Does uh, here's the turn it in video that <laughs> I know it has captions turned on. Mm -hmm. Oh, that was embarrassing. Okay, here's the icon. Oh, that turns captions on. Uh -huh. So it doesn't automatically come on. Okay. So thank you. No, they're automatically off. Okay, yeah. So you the, used, you used to have to use the little gearbox, the one to the right of that. Right. Well, you can. I think you can still do that. Let me see. Yeah. yeah see, that's what I know. Captions. You can still yeah. do it that way. Yeah. Okay. Preserve, you know, so that people who got used to that can still do it. But okay. they now have this extra little. Oh, I see. Okay. And that should really, in my humble opinion, be the standard CC symbol. Yeah. People who need captions are going to know to look for because yeah. it's not obvious what that is for unless you mouse over it. Yeah. Okay. So, um, I thought in the beginning they just came on automatically if I had published them, but no, they, they always had to be turned on. Okay. Right. And I don't know of an option that you can set to make them be. Yeah, well, I, I tried doing it on the link, you know, I would have the, I'd have it, I'd play it and have the captions on, I'd bring it back to zero, and then I would try to get the link to share, you know, like the embed code, because I like putting it's them not, on it's in Canvas really. embed, and I was hoping, uh, hoping that the captions would be on it, yeah, I know. Yeah, it's not in the embed code or in the link, it's not encoded. Well, in so then I just, I just put, I just put that in my discussion, I just say, in order to turn the captions on, and, you know, double-headed arrow, make it big, so I just, I just tell them what to do. Yeah, that's that's what you have to do. Yeah. And people who need the captions will be pretty astute about looking yeah. for them. They, you know, they uh, <laughs> they uh, get uh, pretty familiar with the different ways that captions are display are turned on and off. It is the disadvantage to closed captions, though, which by definition, a, a closed caption is one. That, closed captions are ones you can turn on and off as opposed to open captions, which just appear automatically. Oh, I see, I see. Okay. And you can't turn them off. <laughs> They're yeah. burned into the video, like yeah. uh, subtitles in a, in, a, uh, in a Spanish movie or something like that, that you watch on Netflix. But um, in some ways I wish we had the option to actually put open captions in YouTube or Canvas Studio, we don't. So they're going to be closed captions. So uh, at least I'm not aware of an option that will make them automatically appear and prevent them from being turned off, um, which would be from an accessibility point of view would be an advantage. But then you get people whining that, oh, they're distracting to me and things like that. So you know, it's not a perfect world. <laughs> I think that's all the questions I have. Thank you so very much. David. My pleasure. Well, you know, you're always welcome to email me with others, uh, as you well know. <laughs> no, you know that. And that's true for everybody. I'm always happy. to. It's always a delight to get an email from someone to, that I can uh, that I can help. So please take advantage of that. I'll put my email address. There's my district email address. They let me keep that. Took an act of Congress. <laughs> they let me keep it until, as long as I'm doing this, I get to keep it. So I'll be looking, I'll be checking it every day, so. Well, I'll send you my, my student's video. It's really good. Oh, I can't wait to see it. Thank you. I'll, I'll share it with you through Canvas Studio. <laughs> Thank you. Okay. Thank you. Bye, Dave. All righty. Anybody else? Take care, Pamela.
Robert, Pamela, uh, is that? I don't know if that's a second of the same Pamela or a different Pamela. It must have been. Robert, anything I can help you with? Hearing, oh, there you are. Nope, hearing none. I'm going to go ahead and wish you a pleasant evening and hope to see you again soon. Bye-bye.